What's up, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs? Welcome to your tarot reading here at the Intuitive Teacup. You got messages coming out. They want to be seen. All right, I got to do my spiel real quick. Please come into this reading with an open heart and an open mind, a desire to learn something, uh, to improve yourself in some sort of way. Um, when you hear the messages, take away only what resonates for you and release the rest. Trust your own intuition above all else because you are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. Let's go ahead and set the intention to get Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus placements, clear, helpful, and insightful messages wherever they are at on their spiritual path. All right. What's up, Sag? Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for showing up to my channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. I truly do. Um, I love reading for Sag. So here we go. So right out the gate, you have messages coming in. So I feel like this is going to be a separate message. What? Yeah, I was going to say the universe has something they got to tell you. I can tell. All right. So pride, glory, feeling elevated, feeling like you're being seen, feeling acknowledged. Um, coming into some sort of uh, leadership position, position of power. Some of you, you're just getting more views on social media. If you have some sort of career in entertainment where there's an audience or viewerships, people are showing up for you. <laughs> people are chanting your name, Sagittarius. <laughs> no, all right, what else, what else, uh, what else? Why is this message so important? Why is this coming out? You're making strides forward. You're making uh, important moves, important decisions forward. I think it's going to help benefit your career. And that, okay, so then the five of, five of cups. So I think this is saying you have three very good cards of pace and forward movement and gaining momentum and like you're, you're ascending, you're getting there. And so if there are little upsets or little obstacles and challenges that come up and it's hard to hear it at the time, but for some of you, it's like, trust that the divine is watching over you and protecting you and sometimes what is that what is that expression it's like rejection is divine protection for some of you i don't know if it's like for some of you it's like like gig work i don't know why i'm getting that but sort of instead of like your standard job application for some of you maybe it is but it's like you know they they pass on your offer or they decide not to book you or they decide not to do that um, for, yeah, something about this card is very Leo energy. It's very like entertainment careers. Um, yeah, know that rejection is divine protection. Like I want to say like, you'll get them next time, Tiger. But the thing is, you really will. Um, the thing that you may be viewing as, oh, shoulda, coulda, wouldas, or why did I miss out on that? Why me? The universe is saying like, just you wait because it's a good thing that didn't work out because I got something better in store for you, but you need to move away from it. And and, and not romanticize it or sentimentalize it. When someone says no, it's like, okay, cool, because I know that it's not meant for me then. That's that's a very important. Yeah, yeah, you have, you have two sixes and two fives. So it's funny because, I mean, obviously numerically it goes five to six. So you start making huge strides forward with your sixes and then you start to backtrack and second guess yourself with the fives. You don't need to do that. You have to understand that what, whatever is meant for you is coming into you. And again, if there's a pass or a rejection or someone says no, rather than, than fighting against it, it's like trying to push up a brick wall. Just assume that that's not meant for you. Even though at the time it was something you really wanted, trust that there's something better out there because like the universe is setting you up for success. So you have to believe that. You have to believe that. All right. Let's reshuffle the deck. We'll see if those cards come out again. <clears throat> Who or what is coming into Sagittarius, please? Some of you are making some sort of offer on like a house or land or property. And again, it's the same message. It's like you you may have started to fantasize about moving into this place and it ticked all the boxes and you were so excited. Um, and I don't mean this as, as uh, I'm not trying to take the wind out of your sails, but if you don't get it, it's for a greater reason. Um, so really challenge yourself to keep your vibe high. Um, the universe is never going to say no on what is meant for you. And I mean, Sagittarius, you're a very lucky sign. You're Jupiter ruled. So blessings are coming. It just might not be happening in the timeline you thought. Okay. Who's coming into Sagittarius? Who or what is coming into Sagittarius in the next few weeks, in the next few months? <clears throat> What's up? What's up? All right. So someone has a message that they want to build with you, a contract position for some of you. Um, okay. So what is their goals or actions towards Sagittarius? Major communication, signing the deal, signing on the dotted line. Uh, if this is a relationship or a friendship, it's like someone, someone wants to grow with you. Someone wants to collab with you. Um, let's see, possibly an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. It certainly doesn't have to be though. All right, let's see. And then what is this person thinking or communicating? I think they see you as very worthy. I'm almost getting like knight in shining armor type vibes where it's like, 
there's something kind of regal or royal about you right now, Sagittarius. Like when you walk into the room, people feel like they they have to. <laughs> it's sort of like they have to like bow down to you, or they feel like you're owed some sort of respect. Um, and obviously, that's not going to be for everyone, but it, it is this idea of carrying like a a poise and a confidence. And there's there's you have this charisma, you have this like light about you right now. Where when you enter a room, people are like, oh, Sagittarius is here. Like people are whispering your name, but in like a good way. A little bit awestruck, a little celebrity struck. Um, I don't usually get messages like this, Sag. I'll be very honest, but of, of all the signs, I'm not surprised that it's coming through in yours. But, And if this isn't your message, I will say the idea of being awestruck or... Um, I, I just the idea of celebrity some of you may actually encounter like a celebrity or you may get to meet or or interview someone who you hold in very high regard specifically like in your field or you know you could bump into a random celebrity to, uh, celebrity at like a bar and like buy them a drink and like you guys hit it off and like I'm not saying they, you know they're gonna bring you into their squad but there's like a nice little exchange it's like you get to touch fame for a little bit that's kind of a cool message I don't know where that's coming from but it's very interesting Divine timing, though, every now and then, you know, right place, the right time. I'm hearing the word nepotism. Um, it could be that you brush shoulders with someone who's actually going to help advance your career. And it was just it was divine timing. It was fate and fortune. And then you're going to realize, oh, that's why that other thing didn't work out, because this is so much better. But there's no way I could have ever predicted that, you know. OK, moving on. So this person, the Sagittarius, is, is connecting with a person who's very eager to, to connect with you and shooting a lot of messages back and forth. They want you on their team. It's like, please sign. Here's your contract. It's like they're, they might be pressuring you a little bit. Um, I don't know what their intentions are. So what are they thinking about Sagittarius? Oh, they love you. This is a love contract. Or if this is, and it, and it could go both ways, um, if this is also a business connection for you, I'm not saying it's the same person, but this may resonate in two different areas of your life. Um, you guys are, it's like opposites attract. You guys are very, very different, but you come together and you're like pieces of a puzzle that fit very nicely, but you add something different to the mix. You bring your own, you bring your own background. You bring your own, I'm hearing like variety. I don't know why that word is coming through, but it's like, yeah, you both bring something very unique and different to the table where when you mix it, mm, it's like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> All right. One is best served with the other, right? <laughs> All right, so yeah, this person has feelings for you. They want to connect. They want to bridge the gap. Um, it could be that they want to sort something through with you and have a conversation. It could be that they want to revisit a conversation, especially if you're already, quote unquote, collaborating, dating, working together, and maybe there was some um, agitated energy. There could have been a little bit of a fight or a little bit of a disagreement, you know, exchanging of maybe harsh words with the Knight of Swords, you know, speaking out of turn, misspe mis misspoken, I'm hearing misspeaking, saying something that you didn't actually mean. It could be that this person's goals is to revisit that conversation and like mend fences. I could absolutely see that. Again, that could be with a coworker as well. If if you've been on the outs with a coworker or there's just been edgy or dicey interactions, there's like a, you know, like an edgy atmosphere when you work with them. It could be that you guys are actually going to come together and, and, um, Again, mend fences, break bread. So in terms of this relationship, what is this person communicating, if anything? Mm, they're a little bit scared to communicate with you. They're held back a little bit um, for, for two different reasons. Either they misspoke and regret it and they feel guilty and they want to get back in your good graces, but they're afraid that you're going to reject them. Um, or what is my other storyline here? I just lost it as it went out of my brain. <clears throat> Or, okay, if you guys haven't been in an argument, if there's no bad blood here, um, this person just holds you in very high regard and they're very intimidated. It's that same storyline of like, metaphorically, again, like I, I'm not saying this is true for everyone, but there's this idea of like, they think you're really special. Um, like they, they hold you in high regard, they put you above the rest. And so I think there's a part of them that is a little bit insecure. It's like, well, Sagittarius would never choose me. Like who am I to ask Sagittarius out? But I don't know, I mean, they're showing up in your reading. So I'm interested to see how, how your cards play out with this. So this person isn't currently communicating, but they have two excellent cards of communication. They have it shown up in their plans and how they're coming into you. So, I mean, they are going to communicate, but I don't know, maybe you have to take the first step and then they're going to have a lot to say. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. What is the emotional truth here? What is the emotional truth? What is the emotional truth here? The fool. Yeah, you brighten their day. You keep getting messages like that. It's like there's someone in your life and they're just like, you make me so happy. I think I called that like one of your videos I titled like you make me so happy. And that's what this is. It's like fool energy that, you know, the sun energy. It's bright. It's cheery. It's 
it's free. It's like, let's go have some fun. Let's have some adventures. It's like you lighten this person's load. You may quite literally help them in some capacity. Um, yeah, you may have done a favor for them without the expectations of it being returned. And this person may actually approach you with like a, a very sincere, very like almost like long winded, like thank you note or, or something where it's like, you know, if I can ever pay you back, you know, let me know. And that was so kind of you. And you're just like, bro, it's no big deal. Like, like, like I didn't, like, I didn't even, I don't even remember that I did that for you, but yeah, you're welcome. Cool. Like let's, let's, let's go hang out. Let's go grab a beer. Like it's something like that. I love that. All right. I don't know if any of you have strong Aquarius in your chart, but this is also a Sagittarius card too. A Sagittarius, Aries, Aquarius. So I think they're saying they have feelings for you. Something about a cute pet or a cute dog, a cute cat. They, I don't know if this person would have met your pets or interacted with your pets, post, posted a, a picture of their pet, maybe commented on a picture you posted. I don't know, some, something where it's like, oh, so cute, so cute. Like that's what the comment said or something like that. All right, so how is Sagittarius showing up in this reading in regards to the person who's coming through? What is, what is Sagittarian's energy, please? All right. Well, you're in your you're in your element, that fiery, mutable energy of Sagittarius. Wish fulfillment. Yeah. So there's something about this that you do want to go towards. Um, I like that you have both the knights and they're both going in the same direction. That says to me, you two are on the same page. Again, this could be something between um, you and a fire sign or you and an air sign, potentially. Aries, Leo, Sag, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. You do have a card of Gemini as well, too. Actually, you have two cards of Gemini, so... All right, so what is Sagittarius' plans for this interaction, this encounter, this person, this event, this situation? Ooh, you have a lot of plans. You've got a lot. <laughs> so you want to move forward slowly. It's like you have this card of rapid action, as is the Knight of Wands, but then you encounter this. So I'm going to say this. If your plan isn't to move slowly, there could be divine forces, the universe, that is putting in blocks or obstacles not to block you entirely, but to get you to slow down and go within and really contemplate how you want to approach this. Because you may need to approach something a little bit more cautiously. Yeah, you don't want to tip the scales, if the, especially if this is someone that you've maybe had some drama with in the past. And for some of you, that is coming through. Um, I don't see like breakup energy. I just see like, ooh, okay, like that was a little bit awkward. So we have to smooth it out. We got to refine it and work through the challenge. And then we're going to be great. Then we're going to collaborate and it's going to be wonderful. There's going to be a good partnership. You you know, you love this person. There's a very strong physical connection with the strength card coming through. But yeah, you have two cards of like balance and scales, like Libra energy. It's also Taurian energy, but you know, quite literally shows the scales of like we, we, we can't put all our eggs in one basket. Like we have to, we have to be gentle. We have to be gingerly. We don't want to rock the boat. It's like approaching with caution. That being said, you do seem very excited to go towards this. Again, there's a lot of plans being put in place. There's a lot of messages. For some of you, there could be travel involved here. Um, but yeah, you don't want to get involved in any partnership, be it business or romantic, that disturbs your inner peace because a lot of you, it's taken you a long time to establish some sort of consistency in your life. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, I was wheezing there for a minute. Um, it, it, I don't know. It could even be like stuff with health too. It's like, we don't want to, we want to stick to the to the plans or to the regimen, the routine that we've created uh, in our own lives for ourselves that that promotes good health, and we don't want anything to come in that's going to disturb that. So be careful that you're not signing on the dotted line for something that's going to bleed you dry or that's going to put you in workaholic mode. Uh, you know, Sagittarians typically are very good and hard workers. Uh, but yeah, sometimes like you can overestimate the amount of energy and then you, you know, you don't want to burn the candle at both ends. So yeah, there's something here about make sure you're leaving in time for play. And, and you know, if this is job related, make sure you, you're still building in time in your day to take care of your health, you know, your energy, as well as like your dating, your romance, your relationships. Um, yeah, there, there's a need to sort of classify or um, not delegate, but categorize and, and make sure there's time for everything that is important to you. Again, not like don't go to the extremes, like not putting all your eggs in one basket. <clears throat> all right. So what is Sagittarius thinking about this connection? What is Sagittarius thinking? You want to hold on to it. You don't want to let it go. You're like, this is mine. <laughs> And, and the thing is, if it's meant to be yours, then it will. I, I think you're, I don't think you're going to have a lot of nervous energy about this because when you're going into some sort of connection or contract, it's going to feel right. And there's just this 
it's like an easy yes. There isn't this, oh my God, well, what if this and what if that? And like, of course it means a lot to you. So maybe there's a little bit of like butterflies in the tummy, but it's not, it's not this like do or die. Like if I don't get this, it's going to be the end of me. Like, it's not that. It's just like, yeah, this seems to fit. And like, you can, you can catch their vibe. I don't think there's a lot of guessing here because they do have very good communication cards. I think it's just slow to start because one or both of you is a little bit intimidated by the other. So what is Sagittarius communicating? Yeah, if this is a relationship, it's like you you love them. You're hugging them. You want to cuddle them. You you want to protect them. You, you're very loyal to them. You stand up for them when no one else does. Especially if they have a difficult relationship with their family, um, you sort of step in as, as their rock. You're someone they can lean on for support or something like that, or vice versa. All right, so what is Sagittarius communicating to this person, please? What is Sagittarius communicating? The Emperor, yeah, big deals, big money. This feels very work-related, Sagittarius, I have to say. <clears throat> so what are you communicating? The Emperor is Aries energy. So again, there, there's very quick and fast communication going forward. <clears throat> Make sure you're being thoughtful about it, though. You're not just like throwing shit at a wall and seeing what sticks. I think there's a need to contemplate and, and edit and perfect. Um, but also don't get, don't get stuck on perfectionism also. I mean, again, there's, there's a middle ground, there's balance here, right? Um, I think you need to be thoughtful in your interactions, but Mars energy says there's a lot of steam. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of passion. There's a lot of power. There's a lot of sex appeal behind the things you're saying and speaking. Um, and so, yeah, I think things are going to start to pick up in, in, at a, at a quicker pace. Um, but yeah, you might still be kind of in that, that, th I don't know, like a, <clears throat> There might be like a small waiting period here, um, especially maybe in Pisces season two. Like by default, that's a sign that squares Sagittarius. So that can be a challenging energy where things don't necessarily move with precision, which is what Mars energy likes to do. Again, Mars is Aries, you know, similar to like the fiery Sagittarius energy. Pisces is a water sign, right? So it's a little bit more, like quite literally you have to go with the flow. It's not always clear. It's kind of cloudy. It's kind of, you know, you got to swim through it. And then there's a lot of like things you don't see coming and you just got to go with it, right? It's, it's like the ocean. You can't control the ocean. Pisces is very like big ocean type energy, right? So yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if in, Pi in Pisces season, there, again, there's unexpected obstacles or challenges, but do have faith. It's, you know, that's a very important word for Sagittarius and Pisces. That's where you guys can come together essentially you and the energies um have faith that it is actually steering your ship in the right direction but yeah it's not always a straight linear course it's a little bit it's again it's go with the tides go with the flow in and out <clears throat> you may have an important conversation with your boss or your, your superior and you might be afraid to have that conversation or vice versa, Sagittarius. If you're in some sort of leadership in, uh, position, you may have an employee or someone who works under you who's very intimidated by you. And like there's something they need to tell you, but they're a little bit worried about how it's going to land with you. It could be that you have an employee leaving for another job. Um, and yeah, it's like they, it's something that's going to bring them a lot of joy. And, and I think that at a certain point in time, there was a lot of devotion and commitment to this situation. But yeah, you may have someone saying like, I'm so sorry, but I got another offer. And you know, it's, it's the job of my dreams. And like, I see them being very like apologetic to you that they have to leave or depart. But it's, it's like, they're doing it in a good vibe. There's no bad blood between you at least anymore. But there is something about, you know, you gotta, you gotta break me free. You gotta set me loose or, you know set me free, break me loose. You know what I mean. All right. What is, what are the emotions going on? That feels employee related for some of you. What is the emotional truth here for Sagittarius? What's going on in the emotions, the feeling sector? What is the emotional truth? What is the emotional truth? Ooh, yeah. It's giving you anxiety to let this person go a little bit. Um, being all up in your head. Again, there's some nervous energy about jobs and job hunting right now. Um, I'm going to say it again, Sagittarius, you have nothing to worry about. If you don't get something, it wasn't meant to be yours. And it's because the universe has something bigger planned for you. You just can't see it. So again, that word faith is very important. Um, there's a divine order to this. There's a divine plan to this and there's divine timing at play. It's just not moving at the speed you want. Like this whole, like, let's go. It, it immediately gets slowed down. And I'm telling you, I think it's, it's Pisces season. It's that Pisces energy where it's like, we can't, we just kind of got to, we got to meander down the road without a specific destination right now, knowing that we're, we'll stumble upon it. We'll find it eventually. But yeah, it's like, you can't consult a map. You can't consult your compass because that's, 
the, they, they're they useless tools in Pisces season. It's not about like logical thinking. It's about feeling. It's about immersion in the energy. And it's about life experience. Like, go get lost. It's really Pisces season is such a good metaphor for like, it's not about the destination. It's about like the travel along the way. It's about the trips along the way. That's very like, yeah, you just, you got to go with it. You got to go with it. <clears throat> so I'm going to say the same thing about finding a job and finding love it's a similar message you may be apprehensive to let something go but when you do make friends with the idea that you know what like i still respect this person and i wish them the best and you know they're they're essentially coming to me with with good intentions and and a good heart saying like here's my truth this is where i'm at there is something about being want to, wanting to set f sorry Wanting to go off into freedom or be single or, or move on to something else. Again, it's probably job related. You may have been dating someone who they got a job in a new city and it's kind of like, I don't know if I see us moving to the city together, but I'm definitely going. There could be that sort of crossroads in a relationship. Their vibe is pretty high there. And like, I get it. Like you kind of want to hold on to them. But I think you also wish them the best. I think there's something very fun and playful about this person. Like you don't, you don't want to be the one to be like, no, don't go. That means you. That means you don't love me. There may have been that conversation previously, but again, I think you guys are are getting clarity on something here. And and so same thing with the job. Um, don't look at rejection or challenges or obstacles as as the period at the end of the sentence. Like there's a comma, there's a dot dot dot. Like there's more to come. So there could be something new coming in, new communications with a new potential match or new potential lover. Um, but yeah, you you may need to allow one to exit your life organically, organically. And and yeah, there there might be a period where you're you're trying to get comfortable with the idea of that. Um, this doesn't seem like a tragic breakup story, though, so I'm telling you guys this in advance if you're watching this like, oh my god, so-and-so's breaking up with me. Not necessarily. I think this is something you would have already kind of seen coming. You may have even already had some some disputes or challenges leading up to it. Um, and And... For more confirmation, your person seems to be the one who life is pulling them in a different direction, and that might be the cause of this this ending. It's not that they necessarily want it either. Again, it's just life circumstance. You both kind of have this. We need to address the elephant in the room. Is that there? There is a connection here. There, there are potentially feelings, but I don't know. There's not a lot of cup energy, so that's what I mean. It's like I don't know if letting this person exit your life is going to be all that traumatic you know there there might be a few tears shed there there might be you know a little bit of like oh i miss them but i think you miss the friendship more than anything and there's nothing to say that you guys can't still be friends yeah you uh you have something bigger coming in the emperor and the empress whether you're interested in males females whatever you identify with same sex couples included this is a divine pairing that it's at the bottom of the deck meaning it's not here yet but it's 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 stacked it's in for you it's coming in for you so keep that in mind sagittarius all right. Ooh, that popped out. Let's see. Let's see. Talking, interested, awaiting messages, text calls, emails, and talking more. Yeah, this could also be someone new that's coming in. And maybe you're not, quote unquote, available to participate in a relationship because this is still being worked through with what could potentially be an ex or, or a friend that is exiting or a workplace scenario, a coworker that is ending. But it's almost like there's someone here that I'm not saying you're quote unquote like keeping them warm. I'm not saying like you're putting them on the back burner, but there is kind of that energy of like there's something in the fringes that hasn't quite it's it's still cooking. It's still marinating. And so when you are free, when you are available, when you are interested in giving this person the time of day, they are ready to communicate with you. I totally see that. Whoa, okay, way too many cards, but we'll take what flipped over. How's that? So coffin, new beginnings, liberation, reborn, transition, and tragic endings. Aw, I hate how it's, that's phrased. It's so sad. You may have a Scorpio coming in, too. Anytime I see coffin, death, skulls, I'm like, oh, it's a Scorpio. But no, but it could be an ending. It could be an ending, right? Uh, wedding rings, union and marriage, soul connection, everlasting love, and devotion. Yes, yeah, some of you may be exiting a marriage contract, but again, here's, here's the PS to that. This would be something that energetically you both kind of acknowledge that it's not quite what it used to be and life is taking us in different directions. And I, I really want to underscore this. There isn't bad blood here. In any any partnership or connection where you guys have been together, of course there's going to be a transitional period where it's like, oh, I'm going to miss my buddy. Like we've been together like this is weird and now I'm single. But you don't wish them bad and vice versa. This is an amicable ending if it is an ending. I'm just putting that out there to kind of like reinforce that. 
And then Cupid's arrows, have faith, love is coming in, surprise invitation, and struck by love. Yeah, so 100%. I know you're watching the Sagittarius going, I don't know about new love. I don't know if I'm ready for that. You already have cross watchers showing up in this reading hoping that you're single. So like this whole ending that you both are apprehensive, when you actually kind of initiate that new chapter of like, okay, you know, new new year, new me, new beginning, whatever, new job, new city, new this. Well, a relationship comes to find you and this person is so stoked. Like, do you know what I mean? So try and, try and see it from the other perspective. All right. Affirmations for Sagittarius, something they need to tell themselves or say to themselves or hear. Something that would bring them joy or happiness. Anything we can tell Sagittarius with the oracle cards. The crown. I am a good leader. Yeah, literally the crown. Like some sort of regality or, or leadership or people looking up to you. A supervisor role. A touch of celebrity. Um, yeah, your, your Instagram, your Facebook, your YouTube, your whatever blowing up. A lot of traffic on your websites. You are being seen. You are being seen. Three, uh, three is the, the number of the empress, right, too. So Venus energy, romance, like divine romance, like beautiful, loving romance, uh, a, a lot of money, a lot of recognition, a lot of attention, um, and also healthy, healthy body. That's important with like Taurian Venus energy is like your body is your temple. So you're never going to ascend into a a higher level of fame, you know, and bring in all that chaos if you're not already starting at a good kind of base level where your body can can handle that. If you don't know how to properly deal with the stress, the universe isn't going to usher in something that is a little bit more exciting, but also chaotic. Like you have to be able to, to know how to deal with that. So this might be a time to focus on your body and your healing and um, mental health. Again, how you deal with anxiety. Some of you may be speaking with like a, a counselor or a professional in that capacity. Um, yeah having all the tools on your tool belt so that you can access them when you need to, whatever that may mean for you. All right, Oracle cards for Sagittarius. Opportunity, opportunity with the moon. So full moon in, in Virgo may, may bring something to you or the new moon in Pisces. Okay, I think it's the new moon in Pisces. You're gonna have to look up the date of that. Um, the new moon in Pisces, yeah, there may be, there may be the, the start, the seeds of, uh, of some new prospect or some new opportunity where it's going to grow lush. It's going to grow into something big. But you, again, you, there might be a cloudedness around it right now. You might not totally see the vision. It's about feeling it in your heart and having faith. And then solitude. Okay, that totally makes sense. Yep. I do think there is a period of solitude here. And then you're, then you're back out there mingling with the people embrace the solitude enjoy it look at it as a finite period of time where you can do whatever you want you don't have to check in with anybody it's like make it your own make it like a mini vacation even if it is something that you didn't necessarily want or desire again it's like glass half full think of all the things you're going to get done with that time and and do it you know be active be your, your true sagittarius um and then enlightenment and one more card traveling such a good card of traveling you know, some of you are going to get really into like philosophies or reading up on some sort of concept or religion or group of people some sort of community and you're like wow like that's cool like i really jive with that i vibe with that and then new beginnings love 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 okay cool last but not least angel numbers for sagittarius angel numbers for sagittarius 777 seven, seven. i am in the flow of pisces season <laughs> Let's see, your purpose flows from within you and everything that is unfolding or being revealed to you is part of your purpose. A state of peace and calmness is in your soul. Yeah, go with the flow. That's the best advice I can give you for, for Pisces season, which is probably challenging you a little bit. Um, but it doesn't have to be, guys. It's, it's a state of mind. It's how you choose to react and deal with what's going on around you. Again, your internal energy is going to be mirrored back to you in the external world. So... Come at it with peace, with open-mindedness, with, you know, your positive attitude. I know it sounds trite or cliche sometimes to say that, but, you know, that's that's the blessing of, of being a Jupiter-ruled sign. You know that there, there are blessings out there for you, um, but it starts within. You have to recognize it. You have to believe it, right? That's a very good word for Sag. Faith and belief. And then 5-5, five, five, I am evolving, and 21, I am inspiring. Yeah, you are. Other people are very awestruck by you, uh, recently anyway, in this energy. All right, that's what I got for you, Sag. Um, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you. Um, please show me some love and hit the like button. I would greatly appreciate that. Even if you want to leave a positive comment or an emoji, that would help this reading find a greater audience on YouTube, and it helps my channel grow. 
If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when I post my readings. And if you want more content from me, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook as The Intuitive Teacup. I do a select amount of personal readings a month, so if you want to reach out to me via email, we can book a personal session for you. That tarot reading would be more catered specifically to your energy and inquiries and storylines. That's all I got for you, Sagittarius. I'm the Intuitive Teacup. Thanks for joining me today, and I will see you soon for more tarot.